two. Jambo la pili. It must teach the Christian believer to give God glory with every beat of their life. Lazima ifundisha Mkristo kumpatia Mungu utukufu katika kila sekunde katika maisha yao. No. When you see Christians wakati unapowaona wa Kristo walking naked women wearing short dresses and they are born again is that giving God glory unapowaona wanawake wa Kristo wakivalia minisketi wakitembea uchi je hiyo ni kumpatia Mungu utukufu hapana hapana leave me alone niache peke yangu hey hey when you see sexual immorality at the pulpit the pastor is making a girl pregnant does that give god glory wakati unaona usharati katika madhabahu mchungaji anampatika mimba mwabuduo je hiyo ni kumpatia mungu utukufu when the pastors begin to lie here so a seed get a word selling the blood of jesus at market price is that giving glory to god wakati unaona mchungaji akitanganya kwamba panda mbegu fanya nini wakiuza damu ya yesu katika bei ya sokoni che hiyo ni kumpatia mungu utukufu the church kanisa must repent lazima litubu the church kanisa must turn away from sin lazima ligeuke kutoka kwa dhambi and he say na anasema that fear God kwamba muogopeni Mungu and give him glory na mkampatie utukufu he did not say hakusema that God loves a cheerful giver kwamba Mungu anapenda anayetoa kwa furaha and then he says alafukisha anasema that the reason you are to fear God kwamba sababu ambayo mnapaswa kumuogopa Mungu and give him glory na kumpatia utukufu is because The hour of judgment is near. Ni kwa sababu saa ya hukumu imekaribia. In other words, kwa maneno mengine, he say, anasema, that when you preach the eternal gospel of Jesus, ya kwamba wakati unapohubiri injili ya milele ya Yesu, the everlasting gospel of the cross and the blood, injili ya milele ya msalaba na damu, that gospel, hiyo injili, must be able to deliver to the church lazima iweze kuleta kwa kanisa the fact that god judges sin swala kwamba mungu ana hukumu dhambi na usicheze na dhambi na usicheze na dhambi dhambi inaua dhambi inaua usicheze na dhambi usicheze na dhambi but the way you see the present day church playing with sin lakini jinsi unabona kanisa la sasa likicheza cheza na dhambi do they look to you like people who are aware that god judges sin je wanaonekana kwenu kama watu ambao wanajua kwamba mungu ana hukumu dhambi today leo hii they are looking for a sweeter gospel wanatafuta injili tamu that is itching to their ears ambayo inapendeza katika masikio yao in other words the gospel of the flesh kwa maneno mengine injili ya mwili today leo hii they are looking for a modern gospel wanatafuta injili ya kisasa and that's why they preach the liberal theology na ndio sababu wanahubiri ile theologia ya uhuru theologia liberal in espanol theologia ya uhuru and they cannot rebuke sin na hawawezi kukemea dhambi but he say lakini anasema that if you are going to preach the eternal gospel of jesus and put it back ya kwamba ikiwa unaenda kuhubiri injili ya milele na kuirejesha that gospel hiyo injili must announce to the world lazima itangaze kwa ulimwengu that god ya kwamba mungu judges sin ana hukumu dhambi he has judged it before amehukumu hapo nyumbani he will judge it again ata hukumu tena it must tell us lazima ituambie that when adam and eve that when adam and eve sin wa ya kwamba wakati adamu na hawa walipotenda dhambi death entered kipo kikaingia the judgment of god 
elevated. Hukumu ya Mungu ikaingia. God charge. Mungu ana hukumu. That in the days of Noah. Ya kwamba katika siku za Noah. When they refused righteousness. Wakati walipokataa uhaki. And became wicked. Na wakakuwa waovu. God charged the whole world. Mungu alihukumu dunia yote. It must tell you. Lazima ikwambie. That in the rebellion of the tower of Babel. Ya kwamba katika uasi katika mnara wa Babeli. God charged sin. Mungu alihukumu dhambi. It must tell you. Lazima ikwambie. That in the days of the fall in Judah. Ya kwamba katika siku za mwanguko za wa Yuda. God judged sin. Mungu alihukumu dhambi. It must tell you that in Egypt he judged sin. Lazima ikwambie kwamba Misri alihukumu dhambi. It must tell you. Lazima ikwambie that he is coming back. Ya kwamba anarudi. To judge sin. Kuhukumu dhambi. It must tell you. Lazima ikwambie that Jesus hanging on the cross. Ya kwamba Yesu kusulubishwa na kuninginia msalabani. Is the judgment of God against sin. Ni hukumu ya Mungu dhidi ya dhambi. It must tell you. Lazima ikwambie that the tribulation is near. Kwamba dhiki iko karibu. When God will judge sin. Wakati ambapo Mungu atahukumu dhambi. It must tell you. Lazima ikwambie that there is a great white throne judgment coming. Ya kwamba kuna kiti cheupe cheupe cha enzi cha hukumu kinachokuja. When he will judge and throw them into the lake of fire. Wakati ambapo atahukumu na kuwatupa katika ziwa la moto. God. Mungu. Judge ana hukumu dhambi You look at the present day church Unalitazama kanisa la sasa and the Christian na wa Kristo Do they look to you like people who know that God judges sin Je wanafanana kama watu wanaojua kwamba Mungu ana hukumu dhambi But why La sivyo They would it have played with sin Hawangecheza na dhambi Did you understand Je unaelewa And so the Lord is saying Na hivyo basi Bwana anasema that we must put back the original gospel kwamba lazima turejeshe injili ya awali and restore the pulpit na turejeshe mimbari because the gospel kwa sababu injili is the only vehicle for the salvation of mankind ndilo gari la pekee kwa ajili ya wokovu wa mwanadamu and if you read further on i know where one channel has gone off already na, na ukiendelea kus, kusoma mbele manake najua we are still on bado tuko very powerful yanguvu sana allow me add you something k24 niruhusu ni waongezee kitu runinga ya k24 look at what he's saying down there angalia kile ambacho anasema pale chini then he says the hour for his judgment has come isha anasema saa ya hukumu yake imewadia and he says worship him who made the heavens anasema mwabuduni yeye aliyeziumba mbingu and the earth na dunia and the sea bahari and the springs under the earth na chemi chemi za maji in other words kwa maneno mengine the lord is saying bwana you are sema that because of the fall in the church ya kwamba kwa sababu ya mwanguko katika kanisa that is the reason you have I don't worship us everywhere on the earth. Hiyo ndio sababu mnaoabudua wa vinyago na sanamu kote kote katika ulimwengu. That's why you have the Hindu temples, the Islamic mosques all over the earth. Ndio sababu mnao mahekalu ya Kihindu na mahekalu ya ki, ya Kiislamu. Misikiti ya Kiislamu. Look at how I struck Turkey and Syria recently. Tazama jinsi nilivyowagonga Uturuki na Waisraeli. Niliwagonga sema vizuri sana baya. Tazama jinsi nilivyowagonga Waashuri na Uturuki. Look at the earthquake I struck Turkey with. It is still breaking news. Tazama tetemeko la ardhi ambalo niliwagonga nalo bado ni habari za hivi punde. Why? Kwa nini? Because of idol worship. Kwa sababu ya uabudu wa sanamu. If you listen to that prophecy I gave December 3rd, two months before it happened. Ukitazama uwe unabini uliopeana December tarehe 3, miezi miwili kabla ya itendeke. Do you hear me rebuking idol worship, telling them it is going to happen because of Islam? Unanisikia nikikemea uabudu wa sanamu, unikiwaambia kwamba itaenda kutendeka kwa sababu ya Uislamu. And look what happened there. Natazama kilichotendeka huko. With the words of my tongue. Na maneno ya ulimi wangu. I demolish more than 11,000 buildings. Nikaharibu zaidi ya majengo 1,011. And every word of my tongue was fulfilled na, accurately. Na kila neno la ulimi wangu lilitimizwa kwa herufi. God 
judges sin. Mungu ana hukumu dhambi. And God is asking this generation. Naye Mungu anauliza kizazi hiki to prepare for the coming of the Messiah. Kujiandaa kwa ajili ya kukuja kwa Mesia. Because time is over. Kwa sababu wakati umekwisha. The judgment of God is coming. Hukumu ya Mungu inakuja. Allow me just to finish in 3 minutes. Uniruhusu nimalize kwa dakika tatu. And he says the following. Na anasema yafuatayo. Revelation 14 because of K24 we are running kwa sababu ya K24 tunakimbia he saying anasema a second angel followed and said malaika wa pili akafuata akisema fallen fallen is babylon the great umeanguka umeanguka babeli mkuu which made all the nations drink the maddening wine of her fornication ule uliyoyafanya mataifa yote kulewa kwa mfinyo wa ghadhabu ya washerati wake the maddening wine of her adulteries umvinyo wa usherati wake and he says naye anasema as he goes on anapoendelea he says anasema verse 9 mstari wa 9 a third angel followed them and said in a loud voice malaika watatu wakafuata hao wawili akisema kwa sauti kubwa if anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on their forehead on their hand they too will drink the wine of God's fury which has been poured out full strength in the cup of his wrath kama mtu yeyote anayemwabudu huyo mnyama na sanamu yake na kutiwa chapa yake kwenye kipaji chake cha uso au kwenye mkono wake yeye pia atakunywa mvinyo wa asira kali ya Mungu ambayo imemiminwa katika kikombe cha ghadhabu yake pasipo kuchanganywa na maji they will be tormented with burning sulfur naye atateswa kwa moto uwakao na kiberiti in the presence of the holy angels mbele ya malaika watakatifu and of the glorious lamb na mbele za mwana kondoo wa utukufu the smoke of their torment rises forever and ever na umoshi wa mateso yao upanda juu milele na milele and there will be no saturday no sunday no holiday no rest day no night no day na hakutakuwa na siku ya sabato hakutakuwa na siku ya kupumzika hakutakuwa na mapumziko for those who worship the beast kwa wale wanaoabudu mnyama and his image na 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 sanamu yake kwa mbio or anyone who receives the mark of his name na yeyote atakayepokea chapa ya, ya china lake this call for patient and you are us on the part of the people of god hapa ndipo penye wito wa subira na uvumilivu wa watakatifu wake i'm going to explain everything together nitaenda kuelezea kila kitu kwa pamoja and if you jump to verse 14 na ukiruka mstari wa 14 he said i looked and there before me was a white cloud and someone seated on the white cloud who is like a son of man nikatazama na hapo mbele yangu palikuwa na wingu jeupe naye aliyekuwa ameketi juu ya hilo wingu alikuwa kama mwana wa adamu mwenye taji ya dhahabu kichwani mwake with the crown of gold mwenye taji ya dhahabu on his head kichwani mwake and a sharp sickle in his hand na mundu mkali mkononi mwake then another angel came from the temple and called in a loud voice to him that was sitting on the cloud kisha malaika mwingine akaja kutoka hekaluni naye akamuita kwa sauti kubwa take your sickle and reap chukua mundu wako na ukaseme because the time to reap has come kwa sababu wakati wa mavuno umewadia for the harvest of the earth is ripe kwa maana mavuno ya dunia ya mekoma and then he that was sitting on the cloud hivyo basi yule aliyekuwa meketi katika wingu at that command he took his sickle and he harvested the earth katika amri hiyo akachukua mundu wake na kuvuna dunia that is the messiah himself huyo ni masihi mwenyewe so what do you see kwa hivyo unaona nini you see that after the eternal gospel has been given by the three angels unaona kwamba baada ya injili ya milele kupeana na malaika watatu that now the door closes basi sasa mlango unafungwa and it's time for the messiah to rapture the holy elect na sasa ni wakati wa masihi kuwanyakua watakatifu wote ule he harvests them anawavuna but if you read father lakini ukisoma zaidi he say anasema that the harvest is ripe kwamba mavuno yamekoma that means the latter anointing has come Kuma... heaven has been commanded the cloud has come the cripples have walked the blind have seen the deaf have heard kumaanisha kwamba utukufu wa nyakati wa mwisho umekuja wingu wa bwana ameshuka viwete wanatembea viziwi wana, wanasikia vipofu wanaona utukufu umekuja the ripening of the harvest only comes after 
the second rain kukoma kwa mavuno utendeka baada ya mvua ya pili and then alafu when you read further unaposoma zaidi another angel appears malaika mwingine anajitokeza this time an angel with a sickle wangu mara hii ni malaika aliye na mundu and he harvests the grapes na anavuna divei the grapes and he puts them into the wine press and they are crushed by the fury of the wrath of god and they spatter the blood on the messiah anazivuna zile zabibu na kuziweka kwenye shinikizo alafu zinasiagwa siagwa pale alafu ika yale matone yakamwangukia mwokozi and so na hivyo basi in other words the lord is saying kwa maneno mengine bwana anasema that when the eternal gospel has been preached ya kwamba wakati injili ya milele imeubiriwa it is the last call to the earth ndio mwito wa mwisho kwa ulimwengu then it's time for rapture basi ni wakati wa unyakuzi and after that na baada ya hiyo when the time to take the saints into glory arrives it is also ripe to crush the enemies of god the tribulation kwa kwamba wakati unapowadia ukuachukua wateule wa Mungu katika unyakuzi pia wakati huo utakuwa umeiva wa kuasiaga siaga maadui wa Mungu katika dhiki the lord is saying bwana anasema that the earth can be divided into two kwamba dunia inaweza kugawanywa mara mbili whether you accept the eternal gospel of jesus or not aidha umekubali injili ya milele ya Yesu ama bado for those that accept kwa wale ambao wanakubali he says anasema you'll see the kingdom of glory utaona ufalme wa utukufu but for those of you that reject lakini kwa wale ambao bwana kataa you'll be crushed in the wine press of the fury of the wrath of god utasiagwa siagwa na kupondwa pondwa katika shinikizo la hasira na ghadhabu ya mungu the lord is saying bwana anasema that let us put it back kwamba wacheni tu irejeshe you pastors watching at home today enyi wachungaji na utazama nyumbani leo hii i know yesterday you saw many creepers walking here many blind many deaf and you saw how i commanded heaven to open so today you are tuned in in your numbers najua jana mliona jinsi ambapo nilibwana alitembeza vile vile viwatu waltembea hapa vipopo waliona visiwa wakasikia nikapungua mbingu najua leo mnatazama kwa wingi wenu najua leo mnatazama kwa wingi wenu but i want you to understand this lakini nataka muelewe hili the lord has spoken with me bwana amenena pamoja nami that's why you see when i entered here two creepers stood up and walked away ndio sababu mliona nilipotembea kuingia huko ndani viwete wawili walisimama na wakatembea listen to this sikiliza haya the lord is saying bwana anasema that restore my pulpit kwamba rejesheni madhabahu yangu which currently lies in ruin ambayo sasa hivi iko katika magofu restore my altar rejesheni madhabahu yangu which has been defiled ambayo imenajisiwa by sexual sin na dhambi ya ngono pastors preaching here and lasting at girls lasting at women wachungaji wakihubiri hapa na kuwatamani wanawake wakiwatamani wasichana abortions in the church kwa vya mimba katika kanisa nobody can rebuke women for wearing short dresses in the church or outside the church nobody can rebuke them anymore hakuna mtu ambaye anaweza kuwakemea wanawake ambao wanavalia minisketi kwa kanisa ama kule nje hakuna mtu anayeweza fanya hivyo tena they say if you rebuke them i will lose the time wanasema ikiwa utawakemea nitapoteza fungu la 10 if everybody wants to make you wealthy overnight who will lead you to the eternal kingdom of god ikiwa kila mtu anataka kukufanya uwe tajiri kwa usiku mmoja nani atakuongoza katika ufalme wa Mungu the lord is saying bwana anasema that put back the original gospel kwamba rejesheni injili ya jadi remember february 5 Kumbuka Februari tarehe 5. This year, mwaka huu, the Lamb of God came and met me up here. Mwana kondoo wa Mungu akaja na kukutana pamoja nami hapa juu. It has been all over the radio, all over social media. Imekuwa kote kote katika mtandao, katika redio na kote kote katika mitandao. And he spoke with me about the glorious coming of the Messiah. Naye akazungumza pamoja nami kuhusiana kukuja kwa utukufu kwa Mesia. Let us put back the fear of God in the church of Christ. Wacheni turejeshe hofu ya Mungu 
Mungu katika kanisa. Let us make sure that Christian salvation from today on gives God glory. Wacha tuhakikishe kwamba uokovu wa Kikristo kuanzia leo hii unampatia Mungu utukufu. Let us make sure wacha tuhakikishe that we are not like Babylon. Kwamba sisi sio kama Babeli. Babylon has fallen. Babeli imeanguka. Because Babylon did not listen to the message of the first angel. Kwa sababu Babeli haikusikiza ujumbe wa malaika wa kwanza. The first angel said malaika wa kwanza alisema that God judges sin. Kwamba Mungu ana hukumu dhambi. And the time for judgment is near. Na wakati wa hukumu umekaribia. And Babylon did not believe na, that God judges sin. Na Babeli hawakuamini kwamba Mungu ana hukumu dhambi. There is such a disturbing similarity between Babylon and the present day church. Na kuna kufanana ambapo kuna sumbua sana kati ya Babeli na kanisa la kisasa. The present day church. Kanisa la sasa. If you look at how they are living their Christian life. Ukitazama jinsi ambavyo wanaishi maisha yao ya Kikristo. You can tell. Unaweza ukakisia. That they don't believe kwamba, that God judges sin. Kwamba waamini kwamba Mungu ana hukumu dhambi. When you look at the way the present day Christian walks. Unapoangalia jinsi ambavyo wa Kristo wa kisasa wanatembea you can tell unaweza ukasema that they don't believe they should fear god kwamba waamini kwamba wanapaswa kumwogopa mungu if you tell, if you look at the way the christians are walking ukiangalia jinsi ambavyo wa kristo wanatembea you can tell that they don't think it's important to give god glory with their life unaweza kukisia kwamba hawawezi kumpatia mungu utukufu na maisha yao the lord is saying bwana anasema that this world kwamba ulimwengu huu will be divided into two itagawanyika mara mbili those that believe the eternal gospel wale ambao wanaamini injili ya milele and those that don't believe it na wale ambao hawaiamini and those that take the gospel and pervert it and make a gospel of prosperity another gospel na wale ambao wanachukua injili na kuipotosha na kutengeza injili nyingine injili ya ufanisi injili nyingine we'll see you in the conference tomorrow tutawaoneni katika kongamano hiyo kesho kutawaka huko sana kesho kutawaka huko sana the lord has spoken with me bwana amenena pamoja nami the messiah is coming masii anakuja thank you todaraba asante todaraba todaha Toda haberim Baruch Hashem Baruch Hashem Blessed people Watu wabarikiwa As I release now everybody Sasa napomwachilia kila mtu I just want to bless you Ninataka tu kuwabariki I just want to bring the governor here for the last time to see this Nataka nimlete gavana hapa kwa mara ya mwisho akajione hii Last time Mara ya mwisho Umeja wanarema Thank you my daughter for coming. I almost called you. Asante binti wangu kwa kuja. Nilikuwa karibu nikuita. Umeja wana I am going off here. I bless you K24 Kameme TV. I bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. We are coming back with TV programs for you. Hawa watu watasimama na wewe. To the very end. Hadi kwe mwisho kabisa.
Sam. Can you lift up your hands one last time? This is a wonder. This is a wonder. It's bigger than Menengai 5. Ivory Coast is ready. Ivory Coast is ready. Very ready, my Lord. We are very much ready. Totally ready. Completely ready. Everything is set. Waiting for the two minded proper Lord to arrive in every cause. Hallelujah. Thank you. Let me bless you. Let me bless you before I leave. Mighty Father, Baba Mku, in this final benediction, Katika Hiawamu Yamwisho. In this final blessing, Father, I bless the leadership that is here. That you have given them wisdom to organize such a mighty revival. And I bless all the people in this field. I bless the widows and the orphans in the mighty name of Jesus that the Lord may provide for you this year that the Lord may open doors for you to walk a holy Christian walk to get jobs and have provision and be taken away from Shema that the Lord may give you a healthy year peace in your home bring back your lost children remove people from alcoholism I am blessed in the mighty name of Jesus and the heavens are open over Kenya Look, the clouds are heavy. They are heavy. Remember, the Messiah is coming. Thank you. Asante. I bless the governor. I bless my daughter. I bless my son. My son. My son from Umias. And all of you, my daughters, my son. Even Nakuru. Nakuru ni nyumba ni kwetu. Nakuru ni nyumba ni kwetu. Katika jina la Yesu. Katika jina la Yesu. So when you go home, wewe mnapoenda nyumbani, I have covered your vehicles with the blood of Jesus. Nimefunika magari zenu na damu ya Yesu. That you may arrive safe. Kwamba mkafike salama. Those who are remaining for the conference. Wale ambao mnabaki kwa ajili ya kongamano. I have covered you the mighty blood of Jesus. Nimewafunika na damu kubwa ya Yesu. That he may protect you. Kwamba akawalinde. I thank the government, the county government, the national government that has worked tirelessly for this. I bless you eternally in the mighty name of Jesus, Nina the police force. Nina wabariki serikari ya kitaifa na pia ya jimbo kwa kupangilia mambo haya yote na wabariki milele pamoja na kikosi chama afisa wa polisi. The Messiah is coming. Mas